Hey guys, Matt, Iron Drive Garage, and we are back working on the Sweetheart Roadsters. So the last video, remember, we did a little bit of uh, sketchy moving of the Roadster body and getting it onto the table. Everything worked out fine, nobody died, no projects got harmed in the process, and uh, we have the car up on here. So um, basically now what I've, uh, what I've done since that video and now is I took some box tubing and cut it off at exactly the same length and I leveled the frame. I basically took any sway that was in the frame because of the buggy spring, you know, they, they tend to rock a little bit. Um, I took any of that out and kind of strapped it and leveled it and I tacked the box tubing to my table and then put a couple tacks on the bottom of the frame to the box tubing that basically keeps the frame sturdy, level, and sitting where we want it to be. So the next couple projects we're working on this car is trying to get the, the um, bat wings built for the suspension uh, for those uh, really neat hairpins that I put together and customized. I will need to build bat wings, so we need to set the caster and all that stuff for the front axle. And we also need to address the uh, mocked up spindle setup that we have on the car. So for this particular video, what we're working on is um, in between all the action, I've gotten a set of old chrome. Um, they're Model A or 32 to 34, I'm not quite sure, uh, spindles that were old chrome, that were off an old drop axle that were already like um, heated and dropped a little bit and then chromed. Um, I got them from somebody off the ham or something. And um, I wanted to put them on to obviously match the old chrome brake, uh, drums, backing plates, and axle that I've gathered for the car over the past like five or seven years or something. And uh, this is kind of like the icing on the cake. So what I'm gonna show is these early spindles are not a direct bolt-on ordeal with juice brakes. Now they're very close, but there's a couple little things that you need to do. And I figured I wanna swap all this stuff and get the right parts on the car um, so that everything's all set and ready to go. And when we're setting the caster, we're not setting it with like loose kingpins and stuff like that like is set up now which could cause issues down the road. So I'm gonna work on getting the backing plates and the wheels, the backing plates and all that stuff off the car and then we'll show you the process on the bench. So I got the, uh, the backing plates and uh, the spindles and all that stuff off the car. And now we can kind of show you guys what you run into if you're trying to mismatch parts or if you're trying to do a juice brake conversion uh, where you want to retain your Model A to 34 Ford uh, small square back spindles as I would call them. Uh, you need the right uh, combination of parts and adapters to make it all work together. It is doable, but it is something that you do 
uh, need to do some modifications to, uh, to get it to work. So first the difference, so this spindle, these chrome spindles that I got, oh, there we go, there's the bottom, this is the passenger side. Um, this spindle has basically the small back, square back style, so what that means is if you hold our 46 to 48 uh, square back spindle up to it, see the size of the spindle is, oh, let me hold this a little better, there we go, is much different. So the square back 30, uh, 46, 48 or 42 to 48 um, spindle has a, a bigger flange on the back. The uh, 3940 spindles that are round backs have a bigger bolt pattern, a wider bolt pattern on them. Uh, even though one's round and one's square, they do interchange, uh, but they, that's the, the big square back spindles that came on the later like 42 to 48 uh, cars. Uh, the small square back spindles, while they look the same, the bolt pattern is smaller and they are narrower, but you can use them with juice brake backing plates. You just need to do a little uh, conversion here. So there's two problems when you're trying to use the early spindles with the juice brake backing plates. Number one is obviously the bolt pattern is different. So this bolt pattern here is wider on this than on our spindle. So basically what's going to happen is you need to either cut out or elongate these holes. Uh, this is a must, much debated topic in the early Ford world. Guys have been doing it where they just open, they just basically cut this hole open and or carefully grind it and along the hole and it leaves just a little material. And there's been arguments over the years of, of that being uh, safe or not safe. Um, my thought process is, is that guys were doing it back in the 40s and we're going over 100 miles an hour on the salts, on the salt or the dry lakes. And we're also driving on much rougher roads than we had and it's not something that you hear about. Also with the way it's attaching, it's actually sandwiching. So oblonging these holes, even though it leaves just a really small, thin area of metal around here, there's not really anything that could come apart because of that. Um, and as long as everything's bolted tight like normal, shouldn't be a problem. So that's the first thing. You're going to need to oblong these holes, which I can show you guys here in a minute. The other problem is, is that this actual mounting ring that is right here, where the backing plate actually seats over, uh, on the earlier spindles, the small square back spindles, this diameter is smaller quite a bit. Uh, and basically when you put this in this backing plate here, that thing can float all around the damn place. So how do you get that centered so that when you're oblonging your holes and you're mounting it up, it's not like cocked a little bit or it could float around from driving, which is obviously really, really bad. So the kind of age old trick that was figured out many years ago, I don't know what engine it came off of originally, but basically the guys were using piston rings back in the day. And uh, nowadays you can buy kits from these. Uh, Paul from LA Roadster Club, uh, he and I are friendly and chat all the time. And he called me one day and heard that I mentioned I had these early spindles. Uh, he had a bag of these that he had left over from his racing days. So he sent me uh, a couple spare of these. Uh, they are like a piston ring, so they are fragile. Uh, so if you kind of abuse them, they will break. But basically these are a spacer that is perfect. I don't know who figured it out or when it happened or what engine it was off of. Somebody figured out that if you use the right size piston ring, it actually fits in this hole perfectly and takes up the gap on this. So uh, Speedway and some of the different online retailers sell them. Speedway is just repackaging like a little guy that makes these uh, or sells them and they mark them up obviously, but they do keep them in stock. But I was nice enough to, uh, Paul was nice enough to send a set of these, so thank you Paul. And we're finally getting around to use them. So uh, basically what it is, is you take this ring and there is a little like ridge on the ring here that you could see. So if you just mount it with just kind of seating that ridge in there, it will clip in place just barely. And of course it'll be tough to do while holding it here, but it will clip in place and might seem like it'll kind of work, but you'll find that the spindle will float around. What you need to do is actually close up this whole entire gap here and fit it all the way into the opening, which is a little bit of a dance. This is kind of not precarious, but it's, it's a pain in the butt. And if you have fat fingers like me, it can be a real pain in the ass. But uh, I did the first one warm up like no problem. 
so this one will probably fight me on camera. That's how things always work. So this is basically the same, I'm gonna turn this over here. It's basically the same width as, or thickness as the backing plate. So once it's mounted, it's like virtually flush on either sides. But all this is doing is taking up the gap, everything's sandwiched together when it fits in. Um, it should be a pretty tight fit. Now mine, I noticed with my other one that I did already that's sitting like here behind me, uh, the one I already have seated, it was a very tight fit because all these parts are chromed. So the chrome, you know, adds a little bit extra material. So got this mounted in here. And I'll show you guys. so you can see that ring is mounted in there and you can see the gap wherever it is. The slit where it's cut right there is all closed up, it's tight. That's what you wanna see. If you put this on and you can see a gap in between, you probably have it on that inner ridge, which isn't correct. You want it to sit all the way in like that. You can see on the back side here, it's nice and flush. So now we can um, fish our backing, or uh, fish our spindle onto our backing plate. So we're gonna set this down over. And the hard part is, again, you need to press this on without knocking, oop, like that, <laughs> knocking the piece out. So it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So we'll start over. So this might take a couple tries and a bunch of swear words, but you will get it. I got the first one, like I said, like first try, but life isn't always that easy. Usually the first try means the second one will be a pain in the butt. So you can um, certainly try like taping it in place or something, but it is such a tight fit, you can't really like just, uh, you can't really fit any tape between it. So try and fit this. Like I said, I'm making my life harder because this is chromed and there's a little bit of extra material. So mine has to like, really press on. Nope. Another fail. Ugh. So, I'm gonna keep trying this. I may have to actually file this one because of course this one's probably a little tighter. And file the opening to get it to fit, but um, I'll show you guys once I get this mounted how it is. Let me just struggle here for uh, a few minutes. So I got the uh, the holes elongated in the backing plate like you guys saw and uh, it was a lot easier on the vise here to kind of set everything down and press it with my fingers and uh, it worked out pretty good here. I did end up having to off screen 
uh, take a little sander and sand the inside bore of the backing plate. Like I said, these are old, these were chrome, so there was a buildup on the inside, and with that ring being a very tight fit, there was just no way I was going to get it on without it popping off because you almost had to like tap it in. So, sanded it little by little. It took a little time, but I got everything fit up. Um, the other thing to mention, I forgot to mention earlier on, is that the Model A backing plates. Um, and, and spindles, they actually use a smaller diameter bolt in them than the original, uh, or than the 40, 42 to 48 brakes use, or, or actually any juice brakes use. So you need, I had to wrangle up some smaller bolts. That, um, I just found some that were about right. Uh, correct diameter, just uh, probably a little longer than I would like, but I'm using them just for now for mock-up. But I also had to grab out of my stash, which probably took longer than all of this, was to find some of these grease shields for a Model A. Uh, again, they have the smaller bolt pattern. And you need to use those as well because the later ones uh, won't work because obviously the bolt pattern's incorrect. And we don't want to drill out the those, uh, those grease shields. So I, uh, I just grabbed some bolts, finally found two decent uh, grease shields from a Model A and uh, I should be on my way here. So I'm just putting these bolts in. You want them to be a nice snug fit like this. Um, I took the little, after I got them opened up, I then, once I had everything fit down, I took the drill with another one of these Eastwood carbide bits, a smaller one, went down in and just opened it up enough so I could drop the bolts in by hand and I knew everything should fit um, nice and snug like it's supposed to. Uh, you need to take care when doing this because if you just go at it really crazy like with a carbide burr, you can uh, kind of make the hole really, really sloppy and then stuff will float around, which we don't want. So now that I got these uh, snugged up by hand with some lock washers, I can start pulling everything together. We want to make sure everything's nice and tight. If that ring, that little uh, piston ring piece or adapter ring isn't seated right when you go to tighten this down, because it is like a cast ring, it will just like snap the, snap the ring. They're kind of brittle. So uh, I'm going to slowly tighten all this down, and then we should be good with this one. I can move on to the next one. All right, so now we have the spindles bolted together. Uh, the next thing to talk about here real quick uh, is since we're doing kind of an overview of this conversion on these early spindles is this little bearing spacer. So a lot of the kits come with these bearing spacers, and depending on the spindle that you're using, you may need to use these spacers. My memory is foggy. I've only done this a couple, couple times here, but... Um, this little spacer here, I think it is model A to 34, you need the spacer. Then I think 35 spindles, uh, you do not need it. And then 36 actually, 36 spindles are actually different and the length of the snout is different um, because the drum is actually longer too. It's like a one year only deal. But again, my memory is a little foggy, but some of these you do need this little spacer here. And basically you put the spacer with the taper end down over that and what it does is it spaces the bearing up. And then a quick way you can tell if you have, if you need it or you don't need it is by just sliding your drum or your hub on. Now these chrome drums, they separated the hubs when they chromed it. So it's already separated on this. So you could set it down with your little keyed washer here and check to see once you put your nut on if it's going to work. You should be able to tell pretty quickly and it looks like we probably don't need it for this spindle, but tightening this down, you know, we're not going nuts here, but it's it's tight as far as or it's snug at least. And you can see I have all this area of the castle that we haven't tightened down. So to me, that's telling me that it isn't correct, but let's slide the drum on and we can take a look and just double check here. So we're gonna slide the drum down over the brakes here and we can see I can get my finger that basically in between there. Not good, you know, that's supposed to be slid, that lip's supposed to be down over here a little bit. So that's telling me that this is not the correct, you do not need a spacer for this particular spindle. So let's slide this off and we'll take this, the spacer off and then we'll see how everything sits just to verify. So depending on your spindle you have, like I said, you may or may not need that. The kits that you buy come with them, but it is not needed for every spindle. And that's something that can trip you up. If you're looking at the kit and you're one of those people that really reads, reads the instructions and plays by the rules, it could scratch your head because you may not need that spacer. Luckily for me, I don't really read instructions. So it's, I figured out the hard way, no matter what. It's already looking better just from uh, eyeballing it. All 
Oh yeah, so tightening this down here, you can already tell. And we are right there at the, can't go anymore by hand, but it's right there snug at the, uh, at the cotter pin hole. That seems fine. So that's looking good, so we'll slide the drum down, check it out, see where we're at. Boom, there we go. So yeah, that's sitting down over top of the, of the, uh, of the spindle. I'm mean, sorry, the backing plate. So that's looking good there. So that is the correct spacing. So this particular spindle, we don't need this spacer. So something to check before you put it all together, put it on the car and then you're like, what the heck? Make sure you check that because you may not need that spacer. So I don't need it on this one. So we're pretty much all together on this. All right, so we got my chrome spindles uh, bolted on and everything connected on these old backing plates and drums that I've had sitting around for quite a while. Uh, this video should give you a basic overview of the old school, uh, I don't want to say traditional, but kind of traditional uh, uh, way that guys have been doing it with adapting the early spindles to the juice brakes. Um, and this process is kind of the tried and true way to do it. Now there are other ways that guys have done over the years. I've recently seen it on social media. Um, I think Neil in California uh, was started doing it on Instagram. I saw some other guys piggybacking off of it, but welding around the outside flange uh, of one of these spindles to enlarge it and then grinding everything down and re-drilling it for the larger bolt pattern. That works. I've seen other people have cut out the center of the backing plates, welded in a ring to match. That works. Whatever you do, it doesn't really matter as long as it works for you, but this is the basic, simple, down and dirty way that guys have been doing since the first set of juice brakes were basically put on a 32 Ford or Model A. This is what guys did and somebody that was really smart looked at a piston ring and said, hmm, that would work. And uh, fast forward many, many years and here we are doing the same thing. So I'm sure there's a couple of things that I've overlooked in this video, like bearings and seals and things like that that I might not have mentioned. I keep a lot of that stuff on the shelf and I just kind of pick and choose and just look at it and say, oh yeah, that's the right one. And I don't always know exactly you know, the apart number that it's supposed to be, but there may be a couple of things, but this is the basic process that hopefully will help you do this swap. If you've been thinking about doing it, this is the way to do it. Now, all of this work that I've done is basically just so I could see if these spindles that I bought, these chrome spindles, will clear on my old chrome drop axle that I have. I bought these off, I think, the ham, and a guy said they came on a drop axle and cleared, but every drop axle is different the way that it's stretched and clearanced. Uh, it doesn't always mean it'll work with it, so it is a gamble buying some of this stuff. I'm gonna have to slide all this on and, and fix all the spring and all that stuff. Check it out behind the scenes, see if it works. Fingers crossed that it does. If it doesn't, I already knew that I wanted to run early spindles on this, and uh, my original plan before I found these was to use a set of 32 spindles that I could actually heat and drop the steering arm that's, that's part of the spindle. But let's hope that this will save me some time and also a chrome bill. So we will find out. But that's a quick little update and a quick little how-to on doing this uh, early spindle to juice break conversion. Hope you guys found it informative. Uh, let me know down below some of the guys that we have that are older that have done this. Have you done this swap before? How did it work out for you? I'd like to hear that. Thanks, guys, for watching. Catch you later.